what's up guys welcome back to the channel we have another govi install video for you coming from cibolo texas i know you guys had some questions on my last video and my other platforms but today we're going to talk about the customization and eve jumps if you like this video hit the like button subscribe to the channel use this as a guide to follow along in the video throughout the video there will be numbers indicating that area we are working in next so enjoy this video well, your Gobi lights have arrived and you would like to get started. Relax, take a breather and take some time to get some quick measurements on your eaves and soffit area to get a game plan going. On this home install, we determined that we would have to power from the back outlets. So our measurements from the small high gable split 95 feet to the left and 95 feet to the right. Just a small disclaimer, Gobi recommends not to splice the strands. This is advertised this way so Gobi is not liable or cover their product that has been altered with. This will void their warranty. Disconnect all lights from the power source before making any cuts to your strands. JB's DIY TV will not be liable for damaged products. Do this at your own risk. A 100 foot box of lights comes with 6 strands. Connect all six strands using the male and female connectors to make sure your lights work before install. Since we are starting off at the center of the small high gable, we laid out a strand on the soffit to see how many lights it would take up. Install the male at the end and the female connection is towards the controller and power supply. We recommend installing one light at the center of each peak. On a few previous installs, we noticed the wall washing of lights overlapping each other and have chosen to address this issue with other installs. This is only a preference. Take a look at the first and second photo for examples. It's time for our first cut. Using some wire cutters, make the cut between the two lights so you leave enough room for the heat shrink sleeve. Take the drop off strand down to the next eave. We will eventually drill a 516 hole to pass the line through. This will be shown later in the video. Since I had some help, we decided to do a few strands by pacing them first using the VHB adhesive pad, then coming back with the clips and anchoring them using the brad nailer like described in my last Gobi video. So what's left of the first strand, continue and finish that strand at the bottom. Keep each cut in sequence and do not mix up any other cut strands. Whoops. Not sponsored. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
The right side of the house is finished, so let's start on the left side of the house. Since a light was placed from the right side strand, start left 17 inches apart from that first one. Try to support each end light with at least two clips. We try and go for a clean install so we remove the attachment of the end cap. This is not necessary, only a preference. Once you made your cut from the top soffit, bring the strand down to the next eave. This would be the same process as you did on the right side of the house. Now it's time to make our next cut and go from 6 to 7. If at any point you have mixed up the cut strand ends and not sure whether it's a male or female side, peel back the pad on the last light and look at the bulge in the back. This is the male side. This is the example I had mentioned earlier in the video about drilling a small hole to pass the line through. Use a 516 drill bit and slowly drill through. Center the hole with the line. And then it started to rain. That's Texas weather. You can go through all seasons in one day. We continued after an hour of waiting, 100 degree temps, and then it cooled off to the upper 80s. Now that the install of lights are complete, we can start bringing all the cuts together. Use a heat gun that has different temp settings. I will be using my heat gun at 550 degrees. If it's your first time using one, set it to 500 so you don't accidentally melt the line. If reconnecting Govi connections, identify the stripe with the stripe, writing with writing, and solid with solid, there will be no issues if you follow these steps. If you choose to use a colored insulation like shown here, be sure to use 18 to 22 gauge wire, nothing higher than 22 gauge. This type of wire should only be used on smaller jumps. Start by splitting each line apart one inch, either using your fingers or blade. Using your wire cutters, place each line in the 18 inch slot and strip away the insulation.
We will be using these heat shrink sleeves with solder in the middle. The red indicates an IP67 waterproofing. The links to this product will be in my description. Place the sleeve slightly past the white insulation on the red indicator. If the red indicator is below the insulation, it will fail the waterproofing. For the first time heat gun users, heat one sleeve at a time and then move on to the next sleeve. When heating a sleeve, move your gun side to side and not heating in one spot for a long period of time. Here's what the finished heat shrink work looks like. There were a total of 8 splices to make this install work. 4 at the 12 foot extension provided by Govi, 2 at the high eaves, and another 2 at the lower eaves. The total linear footage should not exceed 150 feet on a controller and power supply. This includes with any custom extensions and the provided 12 foot extension by Gobi. Here's a look at what the bot water looks like with the heat shrink. If there's a moment where you have plugged in your lights and some strands do not work, try this. This is probably because a few strands were connected and the rest were added after. Disconnect from the power source. Plug it back in after a few seconds. Then hold the reset button on the controller for 5 seconds. Now all your lights should work. Thank <laughs> you.